recover two of your passengers with the Highline, and we will then uh, recover the Highline to the aircraft to keep it dry. It's late June in South Devon, the beginning of high summer. Frank and the Salcombe lifeboat crew are expecting a lot of call-outs in the next few weeks. They keep in shape on training runs with the RAF rescue helicopter, which so often in the past has been their friendly rival in the race to save lives. girlfriend, who's not a very strong swimmer, is uh, some distance off of Sawmill Cove. He's concerned that um, if she goes much further... Today, with Lucy Powsland and the Salcombe doctor both in mid-air, the Coast Guard cuts in, asking them to investigate a swimmer in distress. They're lowered back down to the deck, and Frank heads off inshore. We've got a call to go down to Sawmill Cove, so we're disappearing around there with your crew, over. There's a swimmer which has got well off the beach down in Sawmill Cove, but he doesn't think there's any... She's not waving for help or anything, but it's better to go and have a look rather than go home and then get called out. We've got an inflatable we could uh, pump up if need be and just throw over there and pick her up. Or we could send the heaving line over, go to the cox and what he wants to do. Exhausted by the strong tide and cold sea, the woman has scrambled ashore under the cliffs. We'll pull you in, all right? She's in safe hands. The doctor's still on board. But it's a reminder of how quickly disaster can strike in the cold waters around Britain's coasts, even on such a sunny day. I was, I was getting pretty worried when I was in the water. I was waving my hand up. Um, and my, my boyfriend had his binoculars, so I was hoping he would see me waving. But I didn't realise how cold I was until just now and I started shivering. Once you start to warm up again, then you start to shiver again. And that's your body temperature coming up, so that's a good start. Yeah, it's, it's good. If we get a hot drink at you, you'll be much better. Just, uh, It's a simple, undramatic rescue. For the crew, typical summer fare, but no less pleasing for that. In August, it's regatta week in Salcombe. There's a carnival atmosphere as the whole town seems to take to the water. This is usually the busiest time of the year, but with the recession, business has been poor. The visitors are just not spending their money. At the Shipwrights Arms, where Colin and Kim still face eviction, this month will be their one chance to make some real money. You are being known to bring me all these soldiers. The recession seems to have hit the lifeboat too. There's been no call out for nearly six weeks now. Nothing for Frank to get his teeth into. And he can't quite believe it. In August, he's usually out twice a week. July just flew by with not a show, which is unbelievable. We haven't had anything since the 27th of June, have we? Very quiet. Still, it's a good thing. You don't wish people into trouble. But... I know a lot of the boats have been busy. They've just had their own island race up at Cowes, the Isle of Wight, and um, they they were busy up there. And they had a lot of problems. Two people got killed and all sorts of nasties. But um, when it's weather like we've just had now, that you um, that's when things are liable to go wrong. 
So it's nearly time to go and do some work to have a thin net. The other crew members have their own lives and jobs to get on with away from the boat. But the boat is Frank's job. Rescues are what he lives for. Still, with not putting to sea, the boat's never been so clean. Then, at last, the alarm is raised. Every time I pick up a paintbrush. <laughs> it's the 7th of August, six weeks after the rescue of the lone swimmer. Come on, Roger. Right on, Roger. Let's take it back. And it's a real emergency. A fishing boat has picked up a diver suffering from the bends. He's in urgent need of medical help. Dr. McClarty joins them on board. And at last, Frank has the bit between his teeth. Well, what's this hard, lad? We've got a diver on a fishing boat that's been unconscious and he's now conscious of breathing. And they want to get a doctor to him as soon as possible. So uh, we've got a helicopter going as well. And it's so nice. Uh, Mr. Coast Guard Southern Life folks, uh, yes, sir, we're proceeding with a doctor on board. Is our services still required? Over. I've missed them yet. The intentions are on arrival if, sir. After the weeks of inaction, the crew can't wait to get stuck in. They're elated to be out at sea again and glad to be part of the team with the Coast Guards and the helicopter. Just for you. You know that. Well, the lifeboats uh, roughly in all Well, they've requested a doctor to, um, to go back to the chamber with him. So uh, he'll lift the casualty off and we'll, then he'll come to us and lift the doctor off us and the doctor will go with him in the helicopter. Do you know exactly what's wrong with the trap? Uh, no, he was diving, we understand, and um, when he come up, well, when he was aboard the boat, he became unconscious. So, uh, don't really know any more than that. When they get to the scene, the helicopter is already winching up the sick diver, and apparently unaware that Frank has arrived with a doctor. The Coast Guard is talking to the helicopter. They've decided to take the diver straight to the oxygen chamber in hospital at Plymouth. You bastard! Well, that was a total waste of bloody time, wasn't it? Frank can barely conceal his disappointment, and he has to take a deep breath before going to talk to the Coast Guard. Yeah, for information, we did have a doctor all fitted out, ready to hear this. Uh, there was no problem there at all on our point anyway. Yeah, But bloody hell, you break your neck to get out of here, and you get right up within from here to the well, from here to Colby's, I suppose, away from it, and the bloody that's it. Well, he got I mean, I don't see the point in sending us, quite honestly. He, well, got he got here just before he was Oh, yeah, he was there a good 15 minutes before us. I don't know, but to me, that was a waste of money. A day or two later, all is forgiven. Salcombe's Island Cruising Club holds its 40th anniversary party at its floating home, an old Mersey ferry. And as usual, the members of the lifeboat crew lend a hand. For one of them in particular, the old ferry boat stirs happy memories. I used to go to work on this boat, you know, when I was an apprentice head. You used to be Fortin's, <laughs> used to be Fortin's return on, the, on a boat. It used to be sixpence return on the train and I couldn't afford it, so I had to go on the boat. And it used to be freezing in the, in the winter. 
absolutely free. And one one winter, I went down into the bucket, and there was fourteen pounds lying on the studs. And I took it to the I took it to the uh, Birkenhead police station to hand it in. And a sergeant laughed at me. He said, "If you leave it here, he said, it'll get stolen." He said, "I think it's true." It's true. It's true. But despite the crowds of revellers in the streets in Regatta Week, it's not been a good year for Salcombe and its traders. And the morning after, it gets worse for Colin and Kim. They've done the bandit, and they used our poker to ru ru get into the bandit. Because that was straight when we left. There. They've done the, done the blind box. The season just hasn't started yet. For any of us, really, I think most of us are down quite a lot. And um, then it's just one thing after another. Um, um, and then people break in and sort of do this kind of thing, as you have seen this morning. I suppose it's just the last straw, and I. My husband is a person that doesn't talk about it. He just keeps inside me. I think it's just hitting this morning. It's just too much. We've gone through there. I think that if, uh, if he needs any support, he needs it from his friends today. He does. A couple of days later, there's another call for the lifeboat. No what? Literally, I was there walking past. It was on my. God, it's no good for a man of my age. Oh, it is. Come on, my dear. I thought life was going to get easier as I got older, not harder. <laughs> the crew have all been summoned on their pages. But the call is cancelled as soon as they get to the boathouse. Frank's patience by now is wearing a little thin. Yeah, well, I just rang up to see what it was. Cause... His normal, harmonious relationship with the harbour office is put under a little strain. Yeah, all right, don't get charity with me. I want to know what happened. We're running a rescue service here, not bloody harbour authority. Yeah, OK. We're staff. Um, is the harbour secretary in the position to bloody make decisions in harbour launches go or bloody iPhones go now then or what? I'm not bloody editing. We're running a lifeboat service, you're not a bloody harbour. <laughs> Trying times for everyone. But lifeboat secretary Peter Hodges sympathises with his turbulent crew. We've had a frustrating time this year because we've had more than average number of false alarms. When everyone comes belting down to the lifeboat store in the middle of the night and um, go racing out <laughs> and find that there's nothing there and you come home again feeling a bit stupid. But that's, it's part of it. You've just got to live with it. I think Frank in particular well, it's his, it's his life and he's responsible for everything going right. And uh, so he's, he's even more bound up with it than anybody else. So he's bound to get more frustrated, I suppose, than anyone else. It's quite, quite understandable. When we get a whole series of false alarms and helicopters beating us to it, which is fine, you know, it's, it, it's achieving the result. 
in keeping people alive, but it's naturally frustrating for the crew. Summer's almost gone now. The estuary is beginning to empty. There's a last few days for the volunteers to collect money for the RNLI. Another English summer ends with the deluge. Some people in Salcombe are glad to see the back of it. Then, at the last gasp, a serious emergency. What we ought to do, John, is you start a box search, try a quarter of a mile to start. Well, go to the, to the yeah, we'll go position. to the datum search position. Yeah, there, Frank. No, I'm just getting her a mile off pro at the moment. Two divers are missing from their boat, the Totnes diver. There are conflicting reports about where the boat is and where the divers were lost. It'll be a race against time and failing light. I've got some Coast Guard salt and lifeboat receiving you, Alan. Yes, we seem to have lost contact again with the uh, Totnes diver. Try and see if you can contact him. We did have him in tidal channels. He keeps losing his radio. Yeah, at this present time, break, so we haven't seen any diving boat, any yacht or anything. We've been to the lat long position, and we haven't seen any boat or anything. We've got a yacht right down the lower side of Broad Point, and that's all we've got. Um, are you sure we're in the right position? On the lifeboat, tension mounts as the Coast Guard still don't have any clear information. What does that make Yeah, could you um, could you give us a Latin long position of that uh, where you make it then? Because I think we're too far out of looking at this, so we're... The helicopter has joined in the search, but the Coast Guards have sent it to the diving boat, which it turns out is four miles away off Start Point. Knowing the tides, Frank decides to stay where he is and search in the area where the divers might have drifted in the two and a half hours since they were lost. Frank's hunch pays off. With daylight fading fast, crewman Dave Penwill spots two tiny dots in the sea. The helicopter turns up just in time to see the divers pulled on board. The two divers are on board the uh, Falcon Lifeboat. Thank you for your launch. 
You may now return to station, over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but apart from that, you're all right. Are you okay, mate? Yeah, he's fine. At the end, Frank gives the helicopter pilot a friendly wave. There's relief all round for rescuers and rescued. And the divers are reunited with their boat, the Top Nest Diver, as they enter Salcombe Harbour in the twilight. I've only one thing to do here, and that's go east. And we went round up east, and Dave Pemmel said, there's something inside of us. Let's turn around, there they were. Right inside, they had to go east because of the flood going up there. But what about the boat? Where was the boat? Oh, miles away. And the helicopter went out to the boat. The helicopter came over us. Well, as the helicopter arrived, we went alongside the divers. We seen them. We were there. And we never saw the diving boat. That was the worry. And the flood going up against this old wind was putting the white chops on. You know, she was burying herself back over. And I thought, oh, we ain't going to find them, you know? And it, so, I didn't think you'd find them in this oh. stuff. I mean. Did the helicopter have his teeth seeking? No, it, well, we had them before he got there. There was oh, alongside the boat when the helicopter arrived. Well, he was quick, though. They're lucky a, chaps, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. Another hour would have been a different ball game or less. Thanks very much. For Frank and the crew, all the frustrations of the summer are forgotten. You got that? I mean, those men were genuinely thankful. And, you know, when you get that, just thanks very much for your help is all that you need, really. And that keeps you going, you know? So, I think you just basically care about people, that's what it is. Frank is worried tonight, wasn't he? Yeah, because, well, he, he, knew that, he knew that the position that, was, that we were given and the directions we were given just didn't tell him. He's very good like that. But the thing was, he stayed in the area. It didn't go off in a different direction with the dive boat and things like that. And that is what the job is all about, because uh, if he had have gone off in a different direction, those men wouldn't have been found. He is good. That's why I say. In spite of his Captain Bly manner at times. It's all right. Now to live with it. In the last episode, it's a stormy end to the Salcombe cruise year, both at sea and on dry land. 